Ladies and gentlemen, techies and techettes, we're back at it again. 1912.3 is here. But one thing I did notice that it was very difficult to download because I didn't have the optional slash recommended as the standard. Seems like that they default that and you can very easily conveniently get that in system settings. Go to select underneath where you have your update and you can change it right underneath there. It'll say preference of software version and you can go plus optional or just have the recommended. For people that have subscribed, they have mentioned that they just like the standard and now you do have that portion of just having the standard push through when you need to update rather than relying on an optional to kind of see if, meh, does it work? Because the list is decadent. As Lisa Sue powers up in the background, we're about to power up with some patch notes and get down to some fun things we'll be doing with overclocking seems like a lot of people love the fps guide to awesomeness and we're going to get a little bit farther and we're going to showcase some things problematic and good things but let's go ahead and get to the news so as we go down the patch list of this brand new optional which came in three days ago i'm a little bit behind but we're going to catch up and have some fun situations i'll talk about in a little bit but let's go ahead and digest the news as we can look inside of the gameplay we have the boost clocks may be experiencing the report of the radeon 55 xt and the graphics product in the software of the radeon which makes sense it's a brand new family article which just kind of joined the group not too long ago and that's why i thought it was weird when like stuff was coming out i'm like wait what the but also on top of the fix miss what they've gotten with this new update and now it should be a fix which experiencing error failed to detect the amd graphics hardware when certain wi-fi adapters were enabled rocket league makes the list with may crash or experience an application hang up after performing a task to switch a black screen may occur in the performance metrics overlay is in a situation you would like to see, but when opening and changing the game resolution, you may experience that. After disabling the Radeon software overlay, utilizing certain toasty messages for the overlay, the shortcuts, full screen. So basically they're fixing full screen. I don't know what the hell they did to sum that up right there. Looking at the audio and the customs as far as the screens may continue to play after recording or streaming hasn't been stopped. I always say use OBS. You can stop and play it whenever you want. It's very useful. <laughs> I love it. But nothing against Radeon Live. It is getting better. It's making less and less on the list. But as we go down that past situation, looking at where the portion of what is in the audio and the customization we look at what has been reduced as to, was too loud. They reduced it. Some users may be utilizing and unable to drop down to the graphics and the settings inside of the uh, modes. Now you can. Some of the users are unable for the Radeon Live again, may experiencing the missing or not available in the software on some system configurations with the Hyper-V enabled. Newly added game profiles may file to enable the current selected global graphics settings and the optional profiles performing an auto update from the web to the Adrenaline 2020 edition from the 2019 may fail an error code. That's why I went directly to their site and downloaded it directly. I for it. Once you have the new software installed, then just flip over that optional to recommend it if you want optionals or keep it unrecommended if you just like standards you're good what max got you or the improving radeon chill experience it may experience some of the gaming mouses when utilizing it what the hell that's okay cool it's chill uh, looking at between the borderless or the full screen some of the games and the performance and the overlay is enabled and then the radeon sync is enabled may cause shutters Mech Wars 5 makes the list as in experiencing black corrupt near the bottom of the ground. Bottom of the screen, basically? It's basically where the ground is. Like so I'm assuming that like that's basically where you're gonna start seeing like black pixels inside of there where it doesn't look natural, native. It sucks, man. I hope they fix that. And if you're playing that game and you happen to have any clip art of that, I would definitely love to get that to like showcase what exactly that looks like. So cheers if you can. If not, I totally understand. 
Radeon in the anti-lag department makes the list twice, as May fell for the Direct 9 application when enabling the global graphics settings in the option, as well as the counter-strike in the global offensives. The custom stream option may fail to present users with a URL box to choose their endpoint. The direct portion of the direct ML media, media solution. The filters may apply the situations that aren't getting the results of what we're needing. So the upscales and the denoise when attempting to do both at the same times on the image. Uh, looking at the Radeon Sync and the enable on the display may experience the LFC intermittence enabling mid-game causing poor performance or shutters. A gray box may prevent the users from setting the custom hotkeys that would be so much more useful. The 5700 makes the list for the auto tunings and the graphic clocks. That may cause an experience in the results of an extremely high OC or unstable OC. Huh. I was able to push my card too. I hope they didn't take that away because that means that 1912.2 is an extremely good overclocking software if that's the case. But we'll test that because I'm going to have a really cool test lineup coming up. Um, so stay tuned for those real cool real rules towards the tail end of this episode. But looking at where the 57 made the list in that... And some games may experience instabilities and screen loss and control loss, performing a task to switch game profiles in the Radeon software, which enables the Radeon Enhanced Sync. So that's where the issue started to rely on, where the Radeon imaging and the sharpening may fail inside of the, I guess, Star Wars, which they said they fixed, but I guess now they're fixing it again. This was cool that it fixed this because I, even though the RX 500 series card was the one that they're showcasing that this issue was on on the HTCP 2.2 enableization and it failed to it. This also tripped my HTCP when I was trying to start the stream. It just completely twigged out and I was like, let me look at the overrides. And I was like, sure enough, I was like, gotcha. And I fixed it. But yeah, I, I totally knew something was pushed in those situations. But looking at the known issues that are still out there, which kind of sucks for a lot of people because this list isn't as big, but it is pretty decent for me to kind of commentary on top of. So the R9 200, the R9 300, and the R9 Fury series, the products may experience instabilities with limited numbers for the DirectX 9 and 11, which is kind of bad considering that's the majority of what you stream or what you're playing games on. And when utilizing high refresh, um, this is there's the 120 hertz display um, a work around if you are experiencing these issues is lowering your display refresh rate which sucks but i mean i guess if this is a workaround at the moment that's what they're trying to tell you that they have no other way the trials rising tm so oh, those trials are trademarked <laughs> they may experience the uh, ex exclusive fog or smoke in areas of the game that actually sounds epic as shit i would want to keep that Unless that's really annoying. I don't know, it seems epic. Oogie. But anyway, CPUs. Wait, what the hell? Why is the CPU making the list on a GPU? Like, oh, all right, let's, let's, let's find, find out. Blue's Clues hat. CPU's usage may remain sometimes high once the Radeon Game Advisor has been invoked during an in game. Well, that sucks because if you're streaming, that might tank your stream because that would be too much because you would be encoding on top of playing a game that it would needleize the threads for on top of what it would be doing right there for setting up a profile. And so it probably would start to drop frames really drastically. So hopefully this fix actually fixed a lot this for like streamers. It sounds like it's really friendly for like this. I would prefer I mean, what's on pen and paper at least. Looking at past that situation and what we're going into where the cpu making the list the factory reset install may keep the previous configurations inside of the radeon software profile this it may cause mismatch uh, between the global profiles settings and their profile settings uh, the text flows inside of the ui boxes and the toasty messages may experience some language locations as well as the control to the vertical synth may be hidden or displayed when the radeon enhanced sync is enabled Radeon software may be opened inside of the inconsistent sizes, or may keep its previous set sizes when opened. Some of the Vulkan game applications may be crashing when it's utilizing the performance task. A 
for the re-imaging again. And as far as the integral scaling may cause some of the video content uh, to show flickers uh, when the display resolution is setting less than native resolution. So you want to put it to that native. Looking at the performance metric and what we have inside the overlays appearing, the frame lock at 60 FPS and the performance tasks to switch inside of the um, out of game. So it's having an issue. Battlefield 5, not surprised to see on the list is the experience application hang up and changing the radion boost and the enableization on your RX 5700, but that has been an issue. It's just like with a lot of their stuff, Battlefield's always made a list time and time again. Performing a resolution change uh, when the Radeon software overlay is uh, open may cause a uh, TDR hang up or just a TDR application, just an application hang up in general. It sucks. Enabling the Radeon imaging and HDR displays causes colors to become washed out, which is the opposite of HDR. Instead of the kind of bizarre land, right? Looking at that Mortal Kombat live in. Inside the experiences and the crashes that are coming into split screens with the 5700 and 5700 and again at the STTI at home may, well that's such a specific code, at home may, unless they, they accidentally put at and that wasn't supposed to be there, I don't know, uh, provide that one I don't know unfortunately, but B provided incorrectly results at the... Uh, RX 5700 card making that list. Now let's go ahead and look at what it adds on for Vulcan support. Cause this is actually pretty exciting right here. When you look at the Windows 7 support, the shader float control, the separate death inside the layouts, the tool information, and the pipeline creation feedback. These are all great things that basically stretch inside of the depth of them adding more to the Vulcan codes as we kind of get inside of the tighter portions of what those codes are gonna basically give us in the extensions of the queue of certain things being able to run faster or the float and the behaviors of the rounded models inside of the zeros and the infinity of the points as well as image layouts and the vulcan tools that would come along with that so it's cool stuff and looking at that situation again you have some mobile processing points which you can click directly on side of this and all these are completely laid out right there but let's go ahead and get to a fun situation so guys and gals give me one second as me and Lisa's who power up. But as you see, the colors pop in that contrast point. I was like, what the hell's wrong? I <laughs> the camera was on some weird ass setting. I was like, wait, I need to fix that. Lisa Sue, hold it down. She did transform. She's like my personal like CPU Cyclops that just keeps threading out stuff. It's crazy. Anyways, <laughs> besides me romanticizing Lisa Sue as a superhero with a processor, um, there are some fun things we're going to get into. Last week we ran in to, or around the last update, we ran into a guide to FPS, and I started off to like what we're gonna get into. I did run into an issue though. One of the things that I ran into was once I did a Windows 10 install, it completely tanked my Windows copy. Probably about seven to five days into it, it realized it was missing a file, and then once that amplified off of that, it just sent me to recovery, and then I found out and I ran some memory configs, and sure enough, it was the memory that was at issue. Um, now I did replace that memory because it was within warranty stand for me to return it because I'm hoping that it was just maybe that model which can make complete sense. And I got it from Amazon and they sold me a salty PSU and it took out my system and that ran was plugged in at the time. So regardless, I got a new set. We're gonna test out that new set. We're gonna make sure that it's working properly because if not, check your QVL. And the qualified vendor list of that motherboard will tell you exactly what it runs. So what we're going to do is run off 2400 frequency for the post and the pre-install. And then we'll run an overclock for the 2400. We'll run an overclock for the 36 and the 38. None of the install will be done on the 36 or the 38. I do have a 32 set that I could use, but I have that inside of my Project Linux build that I'm making right now successful i was able to bring back to life my alpha extreme board and it's awesome so yeah bermuda prime is born but looking at past that and technology of what i'm getting in, what we're going to be testing is the ram frequencies to see a is there improvement from this update to last update i'm going to ask for the community to leave comments down below how is this affecting you or are you having issues with certain games certain applications if so what i would love to hear from you guys and gals is the cpu you're using GPU you're using, and 
and what ran. Those are the three hardy chunks of material that help the flow of everything that consists between that fabric, especially with AMD. So, let's go ahead and get to some benchmarks within that work. So again, starting off with the 24, then we're gonna OC that, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna throw in my set of um, 36 and 38. Now, there is going to be a drastic step up because if you'll allow me, I will be going towards a full set of the RAM uh, versus there's two sticks of the 24. So I'm thinking maybe even maybe even just running it two sticks against two sticks because that's the most colloquial situation that ends up happening in there is everyone runs roughly about 16 gigs. That's that. I feel like that's fair. So let's just do that. We'll focus on the applications of that and then at the very end I'll add two more sticks and then we'll show the difference of what those two sticks go against the 38. So that sounds fair. So those are the rule settings we're going to go for for tonight's benchmarks. Sit back, enjoy, and I really hope to hear what you guys and gals are getting inside of your CPUs for this Christmas stocking and what upgrades you have. So drop a comment down below. Your Mac boy wants to know. But let's go ahead and stream a dream as we go into some benchmarks, shall we? Okay, everyone. So with the fire strike storm down below, we have a few things. The first two bricks to the top left, which is the brand new driver. This is 1912.3, and it comes in pretty good, actually. As you look right at it, it's the 2090 test right there, the most second to the left on that situation of the top column. That is your normal standard, no messed with, like, except for having the boost on. Like, that's the only difference. It's like just the pure boost. Now, over to the very edge, you can kind of see where you have full boost, full overclock, FPS shooting out at you. So, that's where you kind of get the almost like 2,500. But it is achievable, as you can see it down below, on the old driver. It seems like the old driver is actually overclock friendly, uh, but not by a huge margin, honestly. Though I do find that these overclocks are a lot unstable versus 1912.3. Uh, now, it seems like for as far as the standards over everything, and you can kind of see what the mess that I have behind those, where the middle one, the 2150, as it comes into, which is the old driver, the 1912.2, overclocked with the FPS boost on, that following the 21119 and the 21. 2227 that comes down to two things this is when i was fiddling with the image um sharpening on and off as you can kind of see where it drastically drops like at the very test and where it goes under the 21 we were almost like almost like 20 having that turning that off and turning that on like definitely did improve as far as far as like where the overclockings kind of came into gameplay versus where you kind of come into the gameplay where you, you jump it off and there's like a 20 30 to 8 you're like wait what's going on this this is weird and that's where you kind of if you size up the old and the new it, it is kind of like a direct comparison of where you can kind of see where the overclocks even though they're not as, like, I feel stable. They are showing better results a little bit. Like, I'm kind of getting some pretty cool fly stuff there as you kind of, like, you know, fly around and get some really good stuff for as far as, hey, you know, you're losing 45, you're getting a little less stability, but maybe the overclock in general where the FPS you want to be is that sweet zone now. Uh, but moving on past that, for DirectX 11 and 1080p, as I jumped into the new fire strike testing, you can kind of see as we kind of go down to the portion of where it is from now old to new as it patches onto there. So we have the 1912.2 on the left side, and you can kind of see the difference between the overclock and the normal standard in its automated portion. And then you have the boost as it kind of comes into gameplay, which is nice. It's gaining a pretty solid thing. That FPS boost, when you hit that sweet zone, it's it's basically the middle. When you turn it on, don't go to 50%. Go to the middle dial. Don't go to 83%. It doesn't work as well sometimes. And the image quality off, it, get, it produces some pretty cool stuff, actually, if you're trying to get some high FPS um, where it comes down to the gameplay for as far as the the 
newer situation sized up versus the other one this is where we start to lose a little bit of the standards for the overclock portions and versus the extreme where we actually have those sized up the unders the standards it seems like it's not but where you overclock it yeah there's like a kind of a, like a massive boost when it comes down to those situations when it comes down to 20 points so hell we're not losing we're gaining so it doesn't seem like it's losing some things when you go to 4k 1080p is kind of like eh. now with fire strike ultra you can see as we reverse it yet again looking at the older to the right and the newer to the left now starting from that situation where we have the overclock to underclock there's a drastic boost for that old school but as you can kind of see where the FPS boost goes into play, even on the old school, it adds a good thing. So the profile applied over, looking at that situation where Fire Strike, and it's kind of like pretty much almost losing ground in that situation. And this Fire Strike also, also is being aided by the FPS boost. So the automation inside of that with the sweet spot, you can kind of tell that it's probably already lost a little bit. Um... So that's kind of very interesting. But when you look at the overclocks, where it's last gen to new gen, where the 1920 20 software comes into play, where the 12.3 versus the 12.2 are in a gameplay, you can see that, well, there's a pretty good boost inside of almost 70 points for as far as the way it's kind of producing a pretty solid configuration in this um, update. So, so far so good. Like, I, I kind of like this. This seems like they fixed a lot of stuff. There's a little re reduction in some stuff for 1080p, but that's probably stabilization um, and trying to fix their overclocks a little bit. But it seems like in general, they didn't mess with much, but more, it's, it's good stuff. Starting with the right being the older, going directly over to where the newer being the direct left, you can size up that we see the old versus the new, that there is a reduction in about 29 points. Kind of a bummer when it's just in the old standard. Now when you size up the old school versus the new school, there's a draw. Literally an exact draw. I just randomly had that. So that was kind of cool. So it seems like, again, they're, they're overclocks. When you do them yourself, they're, they're kind of there. But you might have to dial it back to not get some artifacts. That's one thing I didn't notice. Like when I was, I was, I was wait, that wasn't there last time. So 1912.2 does handle it really good. Now, this one's kind of important where you look at the time pie chart as we kind of look in the situation of the time spy extreme. It is really cool to kind of see where... You have your old school to new school where I'm going to showcase a little bit of what I've learned. So the new school is on the bottom and that's like the more newer one. So that compared to where the overclock is on the very top in the middle where the FPS boost is being applied, it does win. It wins by almost like an increasement of 11 points. Now the old automated standard is where you start to see a little bit bit of drawback because i did do two tests showing the one in the top right the 3836 versus the 3869 and those are direct standards with the fps boost off now the direct standards where they're kind of thrown over where the fps boost is supplied you can kind of see where there's improvements across the board so it seems like directx 12 got a really good tune-up and that might have been a little bit of helpful with the stabilization of what they dropped inside of like maybe like some coding like i know vulcan's usually on directx 11 i believe uh, but it could be very well starting to like seed itself into like more of a stronger code there so pretty cool stuff so final scores are in Looking at what our overclocks with different RAM going with in a stable overclock across the board, the 2150 being the old 1912.2, showing that the basis of 1912.3, um, which is the 2146.5, right directly showing the decreasement. Now, with this being my 16 gigabytes of 14 latency 
3200 frequency amazingness. This AMD Flare RAM works better than my Neo RAM because as you can see right there as the 808 score versus the 827 score, the 827 score beats it. And that's the 3200 versus where my 3600 Neo RAM, which is insanely good, um, what, where I was getting the increasements last time was because it was occupying two more of the dims. So if I was able to occupy two more of the dims with my 3200 frequency, I would actually gain uh, probably about another 20 points or so on top of 200 on top of that frequency, the portion, because it would be kind of nice because like I'm going to occupy two more dims and I've started to notice that you add about 100 per dim. Seems like for the increasement of it, every single time you stop that. So... I tried the 3800, it failed because it's normal um, XMP is one to natively want to be 1.5, which just completely freaks out my board for my gigabyte. It just can't handle it, but it can handle 3600, but it just doesn't run good install. So stick with your cube L lists, the qualified vendors. But with that being said, everyone, thank you so much for staying tuned for this amazing update. I've done an insane amount of work. I'm extraordinarily tired, and I think I'm going to hit the hay. But I would definitely say that 3200, if you can find it really great with the 14 latency, is just as good as the Neo RAM at the 16, uh, 19, 19, 19 uh, layout is what they basically have. But this is your boy MacGyver Seven signing out, saying if you're new to the network, you can always... Hit that subscription bell, and thank you so much for staying tuned for the patch notes, the comparison of the RAM, and seeing some fun overclocking that I've been seeing that a lot of people are definitely enjoying. But thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and hit the hey. I'm, I'm about to just pass out, honestly. <laughs> but if you subscribe today, who knows? Maybe I will count cheap and be able to fall asleep faster. That'd be awesome. All right, everyone. I'll see you guys and gals in the near future.